should I make by Nadini Nayar, illustrated by Patsy Roy. Raja's mother was kneading dough. She was going to make chapatis. She gave Niraja some dough to play with. It's a mouse, Niraja. It will run all over the house. Roll up quick, quick, his mother said. Niraja quickly rolled up the mouse. What should I make now? Niraja said. Niraja rolled the dough into a paw. Then he pinched off a small ball and stuck it on a big ball. He made round eyes and pointy ears. He gave it a tiny nose and a tail. Say hello by Rachel Isadora. After breakfast, Carmelita hurries and gets dressed, then man gets Manny. Shalom, says Mrs. Rosen in her children. Shalom, Wolf. Shalom. At the Japanese restaurant to say hello. Konnichiwa, konnichiwa, Wolf. My name is Miss Williams. I'm a fourth grade teacher for Syracuse Academy of Science Elementary School. I've worked for the Sandy School District for about the past three and a half years. When I started here, I wasn't accustomed to teaching with such a diverse group of students. So incorporating all of the cultural differences was a little bit difficult for me. It was a new experience. Dr. Schmidt, 
pulled myself and many other teachers into classes and trainings where we discussed the best tools to use in lessons in order to include culture within your lessons. One of the things that she had us do was teach a lesson and have her observe it, and then she gave us constructive feedback. The first lesson that I taught was a lesson about family differences. We read a children's story about how some families are raised with two moms, some families are raised just by dad, some families are raised with grandma and how every home is different. I discussed with the students how I have two dads and a mother. I have a stepfather and a father. And it really opened the door to a lot of open communication in the classroom. And students began to learn so much more about each other, so much more about the background of each other's lives and it really truly helped the students to connect not only with themselves but with myself and the other teacher in the room as well. Dr. Schmidt observed this lesson, gave me a lot of constructive feedback on how to go deeper into the lesson, how to incorporate more of students' cultural backgrounds into the lesson. The second lesson that I did that Dr. Schmidt also observed was right before Ramadan started for many of our students, I had one of my students' parents come in that practice Ramadan and go through a slideshow presentation on how Ramadan goes, what the steps are, how students practice it, and so on and so forth. And this really opened up a lot of questions for students in the room about other cultures, and it allowed the students to understand what other students in the room were doing. And it really just opened so many great discussions and really, really brought culturally inclusive teaching to a strong aspect in the classroom. Hello SAS Adams, my name is Mirza Tihic and I am Omer's father. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to tell you a little bit about Bosnia and our culture. Before I tell you about Bosnia's culture, let me quickly tell you where Bosnia is located. It is, as you can see on this map, in the southern part of Europe. Bosnia is the, st is the size of the Adirondack State Park or the size of the state called Rhode Island, which you are, I'm sure are all familiar with. But let the size not fool you, even though it is small, it has a thousand year old rich history and culture. Today, I want to show you some traditional fast food in Bosnia called Cevapcici. And I know what you think, Cevapcici what? Cevapcici. Yeah, this is how you spell it. And this is, I know, a tongue breaker. Try to say it, Cevapcici. And this is how they made served and I hope you enjoy the video that we're going to show you quickly now. Yes, Cevapcici are grounded links that are grilled on wooden charcoal and served in Bosnian flatbread called Somun, with onions and some people add sour cream and eggplant sauce with it. You are lucky because in Syracuse, New York, we have a Bosnian restaurant called Euro Bazaar, which serves Cevapcici, and we hope you will get the opportunity to try Cevapcici there. Enjoy and bon appetit! Hi, I'm Melek. I'm Mipek's mom. I was born and raised in Turkey and in this video we will give you some facts about Turkey. Enjoy! Cultural Cruise to Turkey Merhaba means hello. This is a Turkish flag. It has a white crescent on it, will face white star next to it, the background is red. This is New York and this is Turkey. To go to Turkey, you need to fly over the Atlantic Ocean. It's a 11 hour flight from New York to Turkey. Turkey is located on two continents, Europe and Asia. And the second, it's the second largest country in Europe after Russia. This is Turkish map. Turkey is slightly larger than Texas. This is Ankara. Ankara 
is the capital of Turkey. And this is Istanbul. Istanbul is the largest city in Turkey. Hi, I am Joshua Sheldon. I am from India. Let's learn about India and Tamil culture. We are from India, which is the largest democracy in the world, located in South Asia. This is the seventh largest in terms of land space and second most populous country in the world. India has 28 states and eight union territories. And we are from Tamil Nadu, which is in the southern part of India. India has a rich tradition of literature, art, music, and dance. There are 22 official languages and 122 major languages spoken in India and also close to 1600 languages in total, including the dialects. The primary language spoken in Tamil Nadu is Tamil among other languages and it is considered the first classic language of India. The earliest written Tamil literature existed as Sangam literature dating back to 300 BC and it consisted of more than 2300 poems and the oldest known grammar book of Tamil is Tolkapiyam. Among the various famous Tamil poems, the one notable is Thirukural, translated in various languages, including English, written by the famous poet Thiruvalluvar, in whose memory the statue was erected at Kanyakumari, which is at the southern tip of Tamil Nadu. The Keeladi excavation site from Tamil Nadu was found to be one of the ancient settlements of Tamil Nadu in the Sangam period dating between 3rd and 6th century BC. When it comes to religion, 87% of them are Hindus, 6% of them are Christians and 6% of them are Muslims and the rest 1% comprise of other religions including Jains. Pungal is the harvest festival of Tamil Nadu which is celebrated over four days during which the rice which is harvested is cooked in a clay pot over the fire stove and families come together and celebrate this and offer their prayers to the sun god. A famous sport during this festival is called Jallikattu or the bull taming contest during which the players try to hold on to the hump of the bull when it's racing through the course and whoever stays on on the hump the longest wins the contest. And these animals are local breeds of the bull and grown as pets by the owners. This sport is traditionally considered as a mark of bravery for men. Tamil Nadu is famous for traditional textiles and handloom, especially cotton and silkware. And it contributes to 40% of yarn production in India and largest exporter of knitwear. This is one of our pictures wearing our traditional dress. Hi everyone. Yeah. My name is Omolara Hadelaya and I have with me my husband. Adeyuka Adelaya. How are you doing guys? We are here to tell you about some fun facts about Nigeria. Yes. Do you have anything to say? No, go ahead. <laughs> so, we're going to start by the name Nigeria. Nigeria was named after the largest river in the West Africa. Yes. And the name of the river is River Niger. Yes. Guess what? Nigeria is a multicultural country whereby we have over 500 ethnic groups. Yes. And the three popular is the Yoruba from the mm -hmm. west of Nigeria. Yeah. And we are Yoruba. We are Yoruba. <laughs> we have the Igbo, and the Igbos are from the south of Nigeria. Yes. And we have the Hausas, and the Hausas are the north, north of, of Nigeria. Nigeria. And we are also multi bilingual country. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we are. Multi bilingual in terms of we have 600 dollars. Dollar, yes. And we have the three most major ones. Yeah. Which is the Yoruba. Yoruba. We are, like we said, we, we are Yoruba. Yeah, we, we have, have the Igbos. And we have the Hausas. Yes. And there is one language that brings every one of us together, together which, which is the English, English language. Yes. And the English language is from Britain. Yep. Because Nigeria was colonized by Britain. But in 1961, October 1st, 1961, 
we get independent. Yes. And from there, we've been using English as our official, official language, language, which yeah. is a British English. English, yes. Hi, everyone. Thank you for watching our video and showing interest in our upcoming book, Authentic Voices, Culturally Responsive Teaching and Learning. As one of the deans at Syracuse Academy of Science, I truly believe that a team that learns together grows together. This experience has been a phenomenal journey for us, and I hope you enjoy the book.